So if you are needing to handle JSON data in Zapier in its purest form without Zapier introducing some of its structures and naming conventions, then this video is going to show you how you can quickly do that and how the typical webhook in Zapier compares to the catch raw webhook in Zapier. So let's jump right into it. So a bit of context to this video is that I've been helping a client who is a TikTok marketer and TikTok offers webhooks to send information into, well, wherever you want to. So you can connect it to your CRM, you can add them to your marketing uh, automation software, things like that. And it seems to be really powerful for TikTok marketers. And what we needed to do was we needed to essentially track the leads and then add them to a Google spreadsheet and add them to my client's CRM. But the issue it has is what I want to show you is when I had the result coming in from TikTok, the, the order of the, the fields that the person answers their question was name, email, phone number. The order was changing for some reason. I don't know why it was like that, but it wasn't ideal because obviously then when I'm trying to add um, the information to the CRM, if I thought the name or the email was going to be in the first position in the answers, suddenly it becomes the phone number. And then it just obviously doesn't work and it doesn't uh, handle nicely. So what I found the solution is to use the raw webhook from Zapier, because that's how TikTok lets me get the data. It just gives it, I just give TikTok a webhook and then the data comes in. So for example, look, let's look at a very simple example here. So let's beautify that. Let's say I'm sending this data to um, Zapier. So it's a, a value on the top level. And then there's another field called data, which is a list of items, which is very typical that you can get from a webhook. But let's say I sent this data to both my webhooks now. So on a typical Zapier webhook, you can see how it gets uh, formatted. It gets formatted in, they break it out into the name and value. So value and then the data is name, value, etc. But the tricky part is, let's say I want to use name and value in the next um, step in like a code block or something, or even a formatted step. So let's say I want to individually reach that, um, that uh, those names and those values. The problem with the typical webhook in Zapier is that it merges all of the name keys into one value and then merges all the values, the value values into one uh, keyword. So you can see here when I choose the input. And you can see right here how it gets squished in. So then data name, data value. And that's kind of weird because now if I want to pair, if I want to access individual or these individual items over here, I kind of have to do like a weird split and then try to like merge them together. It's a bit odd and it's not ideal. It can be very unpredictable. But obviously, if you know a bit of code, so let's say I set up the raw webhook rather, so catch raw hook. This is how the data comes into Zapier. So it comes literally in just as a raw body. So whatever I sent, I get it. And that's, it is as is. And this is actually a JSON string. So now in the next step, this is when you would need to have a bit of code and experience is I can process that raw body just as JSON. So I can say raw data, uh, input underscore data, data equals, I load that into um, an object in Python or into JavaScript, whichever you choose, because JavaScript also has that load functionality. But now if you see here, I can pick out the top level value um, and I'm also gonna print out the, the data and you can see it's gonna come in the exact same way as I structured it. So. For example, I can say test and review, which you can see I already did that. And then the logs shows that top level value that I picked out, testing, and then the data value is literally the list as is. And how this is better is because now I can say full item in uh, data, data, data is the, the list of items. And I can say print name. You can see it's going to print out the individual names of all of those items, but it's all nicely structured as it originally came in. And it's going to make life a lot easier for processing it. So you can see here, uh, maybe I've got an error. Name, name is not defined. Uh, that's, that's why.
and then you can see Gavin, James, etc. But it's now that the data is actually com squished together. It's all in the same place. So like, I don't have to kind of merge name with value, name with value to get the full object. I've got that full object in the raw JSON. So again, just to summarize what this was for is because what I found with this TikTok implementation is that the, on, the order of the answers was jumping around. And that's obviously a problem if I'm trying to uh, select answers out by position because the position is going to change and then an email becomes a name and a name becomes an email and a phone number becomes a random value. So what I decided to do is to rather handle it, it the incoming data is just pure JSON data as it comes in and just process it purely in a code context. And that means the order's not going to jump around because Zap is not applying some of its rules to it. So I thought that was really useful. And if you have any situations like this that you're needing to handle uh, data coming in and it's kind of inconsistent, I can help you with that. So reach out to me. And also, if you are also involved in TikTok marketing and you need an implementation like this, something set up to be able to monitor your leads and better reach out to them and do follow up without having to manually export a CSV every time, also reach out to me because I've done this for a client just the other day. So hope things are good and chat soon.